Hi, welcome to another video by myself, Rob Allen. Today we're going to discuss the development of our Timberline guns. You're obviously all aware we're predominantly a pop gun type manufacturer. We basically started out with aluminium and then converted to or offered carbon as an option as well. Over the years, customers have required bigger, stronger, faster, longer, smaller, such a variable and our standard guns don't really cope with heavy loads and very short lengths. With rollers now, more components on the barrels, barrels are becoming heavier, especially in the short guns, it's not really suitable. Initially, we tried to experiment with carbon. We made a few pods that we added to existing carbon barrels. The problem with this was for every setup, we needed different shapes depending on what our requirements were. That led us to consider what about using timber and doing a combo carbon tube, which is super strong, and a wooden side pods that are attached to the barrel. We initially tried to make a full carbon, but we found that the hand laid up options are never as strong as this specific tube we make in-house, which is protruded way, way stronger. So this led us to the Timberline guns, which we've been busy with now for about two years. And uh, with a lot of field testing, pool testing, we've come up with a big range of custom shapes specific for each and every gun setup. We can go from very light short guns to very heavy short guns to light and heavy long guns. And each and every pod in the timber will be suitable for that specific setup. So the advantage of using the timber that is individually CNC cut on our CNC machine in the background here, we custom built that specifically for this, is that we can make massive variations. As you can see, short gun, way more buoyancy, that makes that gun very light. What we're trying to do here is make the gun actually positively buoyant with the spear in and fully set up, with the reel or without, depending. We then add ballast to introduce enough mass to make the gun just sink when set up. That gives it an advantage that the added mass helps to dampen recoil. With this standard pipe gun, the more uh, force you put onto it, more bands, heavier spears, the more the recoil, the greater the uh, disadvantage is on your accuracy. This can really affect accuracy badly. So this dampens all of that. Although it's heavier out the water, in the water, it's very light. That gives you much better maneuverability. We're also changing the shape slowly and morphing that there's more timber up top to stop the gun orientating if you let it go. Um, if you do let it go, the way it sinks is perfectly level. You don't want the mass of the muzzle tipping it down so we've set up all the buoyancies specifically to keep it as light as possible, slightly negative. You don't want a buoyant gun. If you have to try and pull the gun down while you're firing, it upsets your aim massively and it's very off-putting. Everybody's used to holding the mass up and you want to just have that ever so slight upward tension, which gives you much more trackability. So in terms of balance, the bigger the gun, the less timber you need because there's already a lot of buoyancy within the tube. So we've set it up so this will be positive with the shaft in, specific to what the customer wants in, that, in, in this regard. Inside the muzzle, there's a small void. Inside there, we can fit varying shapes of lead to compensate for the mass required in the muzzle. Then in the handle, we have small shapes that fit exactly into the bottom of the grip. The reason we want it at the bottom is to help stabilize the gun much better. So this small mass will go in there and the size of that will vary depending on how much mass is required. If you don't have a reel, there's another 15 grams of lead added. If you fit the reel, you need to take all 15 grams to keep the balance. All of these are tested in a salt water pool. We manufacture our own in-house salt water and we can test it with a salt tester to make sure that it's exactly the same as the average salinity in the sea. If you do it in fresh water, some of you might know fresh water is less buoyant. We won't get an accurate um, setting. Every gun when completed is then engraved to show the exact setup of this gun. Whether it's an opal muzzle, 
roller muzzle, single muzzle, they're all balanced specifically for that setup. Down the line now, because we now have the added mass, we can now consider eight mil shafts and triple rubber bands. We're busy with that at the moment and uh, that'll be coming to us soon. In terms of the timber, we use sipo or sapela. It's a type of mahogany. This comes out of West Africa. We also don't need a super hardwood. The structural strength in the barrel is already there. The timber is purely as a aid to buoyancy. As you can see by the variety here, we have a big variation of different shapes. All of these are designed in a computer, CAD machine, and then the replicator, the CNC machine, can replicate that at will and exact every time. For obvious reasons, from one piece of timber to another, the buoyancy will vary. And this is why we need to tank test each and every one of them to balance them specific to that gun. This is the timber after it's been machined, sanded, and covered in masking tape. We want to protect the outer edge so it doesn't get full of epoxy when bottomed onto the carbon. The carbon barrel we use will be raw carbon, so the epoxy in the carbon and on the timber will then bond better. Whilst it's masked up and properly bonded, we then have the barrel epoxy coated, leaving the timber raw. Once this is all cured, we then use a teak oil on the timber. Using teak oil on the timber instead of an epoxy coating, it gives you the ability of sanding and recoating at a later stage. Well, there you go. This is our Timberline gun. This is the first in the series. We'll show a second one on exactly how to look after your Timberline gun.